and therefore the conference is going to be by Frank, and he's going to talk to us about Surgeon. Hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I'd like to talk to you today about Surgen, which is our circuit compiler. Um, it's MLIR based. I'll talk about a little about what that is. Uh, it's based. It's for a zk Stark system. So first of all, I want to talk a little bit about Resero. Um, a lot of people wonder what we're up to, and uh, it's it's an open source zk VM. Uh, it has a working prover and verifier. It implements a zk Stark proof system. Uh, it's a custom one. I don't think it's familiar with to anybody here. Um, and it emulates a RISC-V processor instruction set, which is probably the more interesting bit. So our thought about how to get ZKP adoption was to try to allow for developers to use tools that they're kind of familiar with. So that's C++, Rust, um, anything that can compile into RISC-V. Uh, RISC-V, by the way, is kind of like an instruction set similar to MIPS, ARM. Uh, it's a reduced instruction set. And so, as you can see here, basically, you can use C++ Rust to compile it down into LLVM. Uh, we then have a prover, which will basically run the code inside of a virtual machine. Uh, you can provide whatever data you want. Um, and then we also have a verifier that, that you know, checks that, that the thing is running correctly. So why do we want to do something like search in? Why do we need a circuit compiler? Well, there's all sorts of complex circuits that we would like to uh, write uh, circuits for, applications that we'd like to write circuits for. So RISC-V is the, is the main one, but we also implement a SHA-256 um, circuit. Uh, we use that as our primary hashing function. Um, we have this thing called an FFPU, which is basically a finite field processing unit. Um, and you know, there's lots of rapidly, the, the technology is changing really fast, so we want something that we can quickly uh, try new approaches, um, not have to hand write a bunch of stuff every time. There's all sorts of optimizations that we want to be able to do at all sorts of different levels. Um, many different kinds of backends, so I want to be able to generate code for both CPU, GPU, possibly FPGA. Um, and for the different hardware, there's different kinds of uh, abstractions that you might want to program against, so CUDA, Metal, Web GPU, things like that. So what is Zergen? It's a C++, currently it's a C++ based EDSL. Um, it's used for constructing the arithmetic circuits. Uh, we have an MLIR stack, um, which allows us the ability to specify what the IR should look like and what kind of you know, passes that you can do on that IR in, in order to optimize it. Um, and it, we have a hardware specific code generation. Currently we support Starks. Uh, we use a little, we use the Planck argument, not Planck arithmetization, but just the, uh, the permutation argument. And we use a little bit of plug up to, to do kinds of range checks types of things. These are the kind of applications that we're, you know, this is kind of the, the three kinds of sets of uh, things that we want to build circuits for. So I'm, today I'm going to show you an example of the Fibonacci sequence circuit. Um, but we also have a custom circuit for verification um, so that we can get verifying to run very fast, uh, so recursion. Um, of course, RISC-V is the main one that we've spent most of our time on, uh, but we do plan to perhaps do a MIPS one, maybe WASM someday. Um, and then there's different kinds of accelerators. Uh, you can think of it as coprocessors that run within the same VM. So SHA-256, we're currently working on a Poseidon hash function. We want to do a big int. Um, coprocessor so that we can do, you know, the rest of sort of elliptic curve type things, uh, lots more cryptographic functions, and of course we have this FFPU, um, which is basically just a little tiny, a little tiny machine that's capable of running finite field operations. So our approach is to basically have a front end, you have a bunch of passes, and then you have a back, uh, one or more back ends. Currently we have an EDSL, so that means that the, you write the code that describes the circuit in C++. Um, and we did that because we didn't want to ha have to spend the time actually writing the parser and the AST and the whole, the whole front end actual stuff. So we kind of piggybacked on C++. Um, and immediately that gets translated into MLIR. I'll talk a little bit about what our IR specification looks like. And then we do all sorts of passes like canonicalization, common sub-expression elimination, 
dead code elimination. Um, those are kind of the standard compiler type of passes that you might see in other compiler systems. Um, and those end up being really useful for doing, uh, to making sure that our circuits use the least amount of columns as possible. Um, we also have make polynomial and compute degree. These are more kind of ZK related uh, passes. I'll give an example of that later. And the back ends, you know, we have C++, Rust, CUDA, different things like that. So when I talk about the Fibonacci sequence, I'll show an example of that. We're gonna write the circuit in C++. Um, we then have what we call the Zergen dialect. Uh, this is an MLIR dialect. Uh, it, we do a bunch of passes and then we generate two kinds of uh, groups of, of source code. We have step functions and we have polynomials. So the step functions are basically there for us to be able to generate the execution trace. And then the polynomial is of course the set of, you know, all the constraints that go together uh, to verify that the thing is, is correct. So what is MLIR? Uh, this is kind of a quote from the MLIR team over at Google uh, that kind of came up with this. Uh, it's a collection of modular and reusable software components that enable the progressive lowering of operations to efficiently target hardware in a common way. So LLVM is, uh, you know, you might have heard of LLVM. LLVM is the toolkit that's used by C++, uh, Rust. Lots of, lots of languages use LLVM as its back end. Um, the inventor of LLVM, Chris Latner, actually told me that it, you know, that the MLAR kind of represents a version two. It's kind of like all the lessons that he learned over, the, over his years about using uh, different IR formats um, and realizing what the limitations of LLVM were MLIR is kind of the result. Um, it's not really a single IR, it's more like a toolkit for defining your own IR. So the idea with this MLIR multi-level is that you can build passes that, that are closely tied to the level of, of abstraction that your IR represents. Um, there's also, we get a bunch of stuff for free. We get this uh, LLVM integrated tester, which really makes it nice to write uh, these passes. Um, and the development workflow is really nice. There's this thing called table gen, which is basically a separate little DSL inside of LLVM. And there's an example here at the bottom, uh, which is sort of an example of how you define an operation. So this is kind of the equal zero operation. And there's all sorts of, uh, you can specify the arguments and it's got a type system. It's actually really nice. So we have this EDSL um, that we've written ourselves, you know, uh, that, that basically, uh, is, is a C++ based EDSL. It has com things like modular modules, components, values, registers. Um, we have a non-debt section so that you can run non-deterministic blocks, but there ha that has to be kind of um, combined with a set of, uh, of uh, constraints to make sure that whatever you did within that non-debt computation is, is legit. Um, and then we have if conditions as well. I would note that the if conditions, you know, uh, increase the degree by one. So each time you nest an if statement, the uh, degree goes up by one. So this is the Zergen dialect. We have a set of types, attributes, and operations. Um, there's some fairly straightforward stuff in here, like unary and binary ops, you know, add, multiply, whatnot. But then we have sort of uh, the and, EQZ, and and conditional. Those are things that help us combine uh, different expressions into one big polynomial. Um, and then there's the if op, constant op. There's all sorts of interesting things there. So this is the C++ example. Um, it's, this is, you know, the Fibonacci sequence. In this, in this uh, little world, we have a machine that has three control columns. Um, we've, we've divided this up into control columns and then data columns. So the control columns represent the like public um, witness, the public things that, that you wanna share with the verifier. Um, and then the data is considered the things that we're gonna keep hidden. That's the, gonna be the private stuff. And that's where all the register updates inside of the virtual machine get, get uh, mutated and whatnot. So you can kind of see, you know, here we have an if statement. It says if the control, if the zero if control bit is set, then we're gonna initialize the value to one. Um, we have this interesting thing, there's a back, which is kind of a, feature of a Stark, um, one of the reasons why we wanted to use a Stark is that we wanted this notion of a back reference. Um, and 
in this, in this world, you can say back one or back two. It means go back one or two rows or two cycles um, and retrieve the value at that point. And by the way, all this stuff is eventually going to get turned into a polynomial constraint. Um, but at this stage, it's kind of, it's kind of imperative. So the very next thing is we translate this into, this is the MLIR dialect. Um, it's the same code, it's just that it's now been translated into this level. And at this stage, we can do all sorts of interesting optimizations and different passes. Um, and it's really nice to be able to look at and kind of verify with your eyes, but you can also write automated tests that make sure that, that the thing is being translated correctly. Um, so, and then the next thing is we call the make polynomial uh, pass, which basically turns the, the thing that I had in the past slide over into um, a big long polynomial constraint. Um, and then by the way, you know, there's canonicalization. So if you looked here on the left, there's places where uh, we have duplicate, so you can see like percent one, sorry, percent zero, percent nine, percent 18, they're all duplicate. Um, so one of the things we can do is run kind of a standard canonicalization pass, common sub-expression elimination, and so we end up, you know, reducing the number of constraints from, you know, 26 down into 18. We can compute the degree. Um, so for every one of these expressions, we can say, okay, well, how many degree, how much degree are we using, uh, you know, constants are zero, uh, simple expressions are one, but when we use if statements and other combinations, um, that turns into, it raises the degree. And in our system, uh, five is the max number of, of degree that we can allow, so uh, we, we check to make sure that, that we stay within that limit. So then we generate some, this is a, an example of generating some C++ code. Um, this is the step execution function. And it, you, know, you pass in a cycle, and this will actually run the machine uh, one cycle's worth. And so the idea is that you're gonna call this thing for every cycle that you wanna run. Um, and so, you know, our, um, our performance is, as uh, somebody else had said earlier, uh, it's, it's like a 70s uh, computer. Uh, it runs at 25 kilohertz today on a CPU, and on a GPU and get up to 550 kilohertz. We do have an end of year target, perhaps uh, maybe next, early next year of uh, 500 kilohertz. We think we can get about a 10x improvement because there's lots of opportunities to do um, parallelization. Um, and today we, we actually do have recursion working, so that's basically, for us it's pretty easy because you just take your Rust, you know, I have, I have a, a version of the verifier written in Rust and I can just recompile it uh, into RISC-V and then run it within the same virtual machine and uh, we get about 37 seconds currently on a pretty fast, you know, modern GPU. Um, so that's it. Um, if you have any questions, come grab me. Um, Thank you. Any questions? How is the state of documentation for Surgeon, for auditors, you know? Yeah, so Surgeon is, <laughs> is closed sourced at the moment. Um, it, we plan to open source it soon. Um, we do have a formal methods project that we're working on in order to do like a verified verifier. Um, and so we definitely, part, part of what we want to do is have a back end that actually generates documentation. So it generates the circuit so that people can audit it. This is kind of similar to what the Leo guys are doing. Um, uh, I don't know, uh, I, don't, I don't know. We have some documentation, we, we could always use more. Yeah. yeah. So. Not yet public, <laughs> but it should be soon. Yeah. And on, on those numbers, the cycles, they are uh, risk five instructions. That's right. Well, that's very impressive. Uh, and the um, risk VM uh, itself, does it, the step transition that uh, I think you were showing, this is one instruction to the next, or, or you have some kind of sub instruction or something like this, or, or another VM that emulates something like that? So in the first, ver so the public version, if you go, it's open source right now, the VM. Uh, if you go to the public version, um, it actually takes three cycles to do one instruction. 
in the newer version, we have a closed source version that we are going to release soon uh, using Surgen as the compiler. And it does one cycle per instruction. Um, so there's no sub cycles. Although I would say if the, I think the multiply actually does take two cycles. So when, you know, when we have a more complex circuit for a particular instruction, sometimes we eat up, you know, two cycles in order to do that. Just because, you know, the number of columns we would be eating up otherwise would just cause the performance to go way down. So there's kind of a tricky balance between, you know, the, picking the right parameters for everything. And uh, how expensive is the verifier? Uh, very fast, um, milliseconds. You know, it, it doesn't take very long to run the verifier. But, um, but can it run on the blockchain? So we don't yet have an implementation on the blockchain. Uh, we do plan to write the Solidity version uh, and then other versions. We do have a near. Uh, we've already written the near version. So um, because it's Rust code, you know, we can compile the WASM pretty easily. Uh, so we, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Thanks. And if there did happen to be a Planck standard, would you use it? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I guess if if we were using Planck, but I, I don't know that we are. So, okay. Uh, but yes, I would definitely use uh, standard if, if it made sense. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can we thank our speaker one more time? Thank you.